What's going on guys? My name is Will. Today I'm getting my hair cut while I tell you the lessons I learned from my entrepreneur journey, my first business, going from zero to a million dollars. I'm 24. I dropped out of college. I've never had mentors. My parents weren't entrepreneurs. I learned everything myself the hard way. Hopefully I can pass some of the lessons I learned from that onto you. You can learn from that and do things differently. Any business boils down to three things. A good product or service, a good funnel, and good marketing. What makes a good product or service? A, make sure that there's actual proven demand. B, if this is something that already exists, make sure that what you're offering is a good innovation on what's currently there. You're making it better in some way, somehow. The world doesn't need more repeats of the same thing. Make sure you are looking at any business with a customer-centric approach, considering how your product or service is going to be used. Every transaction should be a win-win. Your product going to someone's hand and their money going to your hands. Everyone should leave happy. Don't sell a service you're not good at and don't sell a product that you wouldn't consume yourself or recommend to a friend or family member. Next is a good funnel. This is your website, the way that you direct people to that website. Simplicity is key here. You want your website to be super simple and easy to understand. What's the most important feature? What's the most important product? Make sure these elements are highlighted. When someone comes to your website, imagine your grandma going and looking through your website. If it takes her more than three seconds to immediately find out what does your website do, what are you selling, or why should you buy that thing, then it's probably too complicated or it's missing information about what's most important. Important. Again, if you got many products, highlight the most important one, the one that you want to sell the most of. And if you only got one product, highlight the most important features. Buy yours is better than anybody else doing the same thing. And then finally, we want to have good marketing. It's how you actually bring customers in the door and close them. In the case of e-commerce, your website is supposed to be the thing that closes them. But even if you have a bad website, sometimes just driving tons of traffic will overpower that. When you're just getting started in the world of e-commerce or whatever it is you're doing, you should take advantage of social media and free organic traffic. There's a big opportunity right now on social media with short form content because right now they're all competing for short form views. Learn how to make good short form content that is informative and is a good piece of content to watch. That will ultimately help people get attracted to you or your business and send them down your funnel into your website to actually buy stuff. So there's always going to be an opportunity of whatever it is that they're trying to promote the most. And if you can find what that is, take advantage of that, you can get a ton of free traffic to help you get your business started. Once you figure out how to make good content, and you can do this by literally just watching people who are already doing this well, watch people who are making content well that are selling products and take away the core elements of that. Their framing, their focus, their lighting, all of these things add up to make a good piece of content. And when they watch it, they'll ultimately go down your funnel and go to your website. When I first got my business started, I was not a content creator. I did not really know how to make good content. I looked at what other successful content creators were doing. I took away as much information from that as I could. I replicated style, lighting, pacing, all of these different things as I could so that I could make actual good pieces of content for my business that were informative, that were comedic, so that I could attract people with good content. Again, anyone can make social media content. You don't have to be attractive. You don't have to be charismatic and you don't even have to have expensive equipment. Do this with your iPhone at first or whatever kind of phone you have. Figure out whatever kind of lighting you can make work with what you have. Get started and you'll improve as you go. So that's really the main three things that it boils down to to get from zero to a million. Now let's talk about the actual journey of going there. To start small but dream big. You have to have the end goal in mind with everything that you're doing but on a day-to-day -day basis when you have nothing and you're trying to work to get something you have to set achievable goals where day by day you can accomplish things taking you know 1% closer, 1% closer to that ultimate big dream you've got. Now, as I was first getting started trying to sell stuff online, I was around a couple other friends trying to do the same thing, and I saw how failure completely took them out and stopped them from doing what they wanted to do. Failure is never a reason to give up, always just a reason to learn and adapt. Adaptability is key as an entrepreneur. You have to accept that there will always be failure. Failures will always be bigger, more scary, more risky, and nothing's gonna stop that from happening. Because to grow, you have to explore uncharted territories. That means discovering new things, crossing new boundaries, boundaries. But in all of this, just know persistency pays off. As long as you keep on going, push through all failures, you will eventually become successful. The biggest part of growing from where you are now at probably zero to wherever you want to be at a million dollars or whatever it is, is learning. Because what's between you and that zero and a million dollars is not the money, it's the knowledge. Every single day while you're taking these steps towards whatever the big goal is, make sure you're also investing time in learning, watching YouTube videos, attending seminars or classes. You want to constantly be surrounding yourself with people who are smarter than you, 
you with knowledge that's more than what you have so you can absorb that and get closer to the person who has the million dollars as opposed to getting more dollars to get you there. More knowledge will equate to more wealth. So surrounding yourself with good people is always important, but it's never necessary. As I was growing as an entrepreneur, I always thought I had to be on a winning team, that I always had to be with people that were winners or that I needed some sort of mentor or some outside force to help me get there. The truth is you just really have to be dedicated to learning by any means necessary. The internet is there. There's tons of free knowledge out there and you have to be persistent through all elements of failure. However, I will say if I did have a group that was of actual winners, of actual people who were that same level of persistency through all types of failure, I probably would have got there faster. Because when you're with a group of a bunch of people, they can share those lessons. And when you learn from other people's lessons faster, you don't have to make those same mistakes yourself. I made a Discord called Good Global. If you want to join it, join it because I'm putting together a group of entrepreneurs and hopefully we can all learn stuff from each other. I'm not trying to sell you anything. The only thing I want to do is make the world a better place by putting good people together. Next up, value your time. Time is your most precious resource when you're starting a business and learning how to prioritize your time on the important things and learning how to delegate any tasks that are not necessary for you to be doing to someone else that you can pay to do them is the most important skill of an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur's job is not to do all the things and be good at a lot of things. An entrepreneur's job is to bring together a team of people who are good at those things and motivate them in the right way to get those things done. At first, you're not going to have money to do this. Either you incentivize teammates with equity or you do it yourself until you can make some money to pay those people. And that's your first priority is making just enough money to pay people to do the things that you don't need to be doing outsource those as soon as possible because the game is all about buying back your time and keeping the business profitable the second you can start exchanging your money for more of your time by buying employees even if that means you're still taking zero dollars home if you can get more done grow more and have more time you're going in the right direction building an awesome team is the most important thing that you can do to do this you have to have a good system making sure everybody has clear roles and making sure people are motivated when you're bringing people into your company Company, you really have to be a leader. You have to have them buy into your vision. And for that, you have to have a good vision and a good reason for them to buy in. Money is never the best reason for them to buy in, especially when you don't have a lot of it. So hopefully whatever you're selling or whatever service you're providing is good. It's cool. It's good for the world. People like being a part of it and it's exciting. Another really important lesson to completely own as you're growing and scaling is everything is your fault. Every single problem of the business is your fault. You had a bad employee and the bad employee is causing some sort of problem. That's your fault because you need to fire them. You are the business owner. You're the one in charge of everything. Everything that the business does or does not do is your responsibility. You have to take ownership of absolutely everything because you got to realize every employee under you is an employee and you are the business owner. If they're not doing their job properly, then one of two things. You either didn't teach them to do it properly or they're not a good fit and you need to fire them and hire someone who is a good fit. There are times where it's important to have someone who's cheaper that you can teach, but that's going to stick by your side. And there's times to know when to hire someone who is way smarter than you at whatever it is that you're doing. They might be more expensive, but in the long run, someone who is cheaper, but not as experienced is probably going to end up costing you a lot more than someone who is more expensive, but a lot more experienced. I heard a really good quote when I got started in business. I don't pay my employees a lot of money because I'm successful. I'm successful because I pay my employees a lot of money. I can tell you this personally, I have wasted a lot of money and a lot of time employees that I thought I'm getting a good deal on, but really they're just wasting my money because they're not getting anything done. They're wasting my opportunity cost as well as my money. So make good hires and make sure that they're going in the right direction. As an entrepreneur, investing in people is the most important thing you'll do. Final lesson I want to share is doing the math. It is the most important thing that you can possibly do. Understanding your numbers, how much does everything cost? How much money is going in? How much money is going out? What's the profit margins of everything? What's the customer acquisition cost? Lifetime value of customers? All of these type of things, you need to understand the numbers behind your business. Sometimes you can get caught up in all the numbers going in, the growth of the followers, the growth of the revenue, but you can quickly lose touch of the actual profit. If I can spend $10,000 and get $10,000 of sales, that's cool. It might seem like things are working, but what if my profit margin is only 50% and I have a base operating cost of $5,000 a month? Sometimes numbers can look good as they're flashy and it makes you feel like you're doing really well, but you have to know at the end of the day, am I actually making money doing this or am I just spinning the wheels? If you have a really good lifetime value of a customer, then you can spin the wheels a little bit up front because you know in the long term, you're going to build something and it's going to be worthwhile. If you don't have a good lifetime value of the customers and you're not making money immediately, then you should realize pretty quickly you don't have a legitimate business and you should find something else to do. I learned a ton of lessons every single day and the journey from zero to my first million 
was crazy. I made so many mistakes. The three steps in my funnel that I said I set up, I had huge flaws in not only the product, but also the funnel of the website and especially in the back end. But I was really good at marketing. All of those other things for me were the things that I had to play catch up on and learn after the fact. Luckily, my marketing was good enough that I was able to scale my business and then improve on those first two things later on. But the more time you spend learning about every one of those steps and investing in that upfront development of what you're offering, the easier your journey is gonna be. Really, the journey will never be easy. It's always gonna be difficult. But that's part of the fun of being an entrepreneur and building a business. I'm just sharing lessons of my story and hopefully you can take something away from that. If you like the video, subscribe, stick around for more. I'm gonna keep dropping stuff, sharing my knowledge as I learn it. I learn every single day, so I'm gonna try to teach you along the way. Appreciate you for sticking around this long. Peace.